Hey everybody, thanks for joining me on another episode of Cutting Up With Bay. Today we are going to make some soul food, but before we make some soul food, I need you to hit that like button. It's free, and I thank you guys so much for the support. Now back to the soul food. Now it's the middle of the week, but sometimes you want something that's just warm and delicious to your soul. So we're going to have some cabbage, we're going to have some sweet potatoes, um, some cornbread, and some fried chicken. Now as you can see, I cut up my cabbage here and I have me a sweet potato here I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna slice that sweet potato up actually I have like five or six of them I'm gonna put all the recipe information in the description below all the specifics all the details no worries now I have my onion I'm gonna go ahead slice that onion up um, you can use a sweet onion or a yellow onion it really doesn't matter but I like sweet onions sweet yellow onions they're my preference now, I have some thick cut bacon. You can use regular sliced bacon or thick cut, um, whatever's available. And I'm going to cut that up as well. Just cut it up into nice chunks. So now that we have our bacon cut up, I have my pan and it's nice and hot. You can see the steam and I have my bacon. I'm just going to throw it in and I'm going to get to cooking that bacon until it get nice and crispy and golden brown. I'm moving the bacon around just to make sure that all the bacon browns evenly. Now, normally when I cook bacon, I would discard the grease, but I'm not going to discard the grease at this point because I'm going to actually add in some onions. The grease from the bacon is actually going to help flavor the cabbage because cabbage is kind of bland. So it's up to you to season it and make sure it tastes good. Um, any type of smoked meat is good for stuff like cabbage and greens, but bacon is also a good alternative as well well so i'm gonna mix 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 just make sure nothing's burning make sure everything is just mixed thoroughly and incorporated very well Now, I'm also going to include some garlic in this as well, but I like to add it in when I'm almost about ready to either add my cabbage in or right after I add my cabbage in because I don't want the garlic to burn and overcook because if you overcook garlic, it has a really bitter taste to it. So now that I have my cabbage into the pan i'm gonna mix it up and make sure everything is incorporated like i said but i'm gonna throw in some chef based seasoning and make sure i season it up and make sure it tastes so good now i really encourage you guys to check out my website www.cuttingupwithbay.com i'm running a special on not only my seasoning salt but my lemon pepper seasoning i also have some more seasonings that's going to drop before the end of the month um if you don't have chef based seasonings or if you're unable to get them at the moment you can always season your cabbage with some salt some pepper um you know it's a matter of preference so if you want to add some garlic powder on top of the garlic that we're going to add the minced garlic you can do that you can add some onion powder since we added some onions in here um it's just a mixture of things that you can add whether you know it's just salt and pepper or just a mixture of that salt pepper garlic um, my seasoning has over 10 spices in it so um, I really encourage you guys to check it out but um, more on that another time so for the sweet potatoes first of all I love sweet potatoes because my grandma, I feel like, made the best sweet potatoes ever. So even though mines are amazingly delicious, I feel like mines can't even touch hers. So um, I love sweet potatoes, and I figured I'd share this dish with you guys. So I just melted some butter, and after I melted the butter, I added some cinnamon, nutmeg, cloves, um, ground cloves. And from there, you see me adding regular sugar and some brown sugar. Now... 
I like to add my sugars like in patches. I mean, you can add all your sugar in the bowl at one time and mix it up. But I like to add a little bit, mix it, add a little bit more, mix it up. And, you know, just find that perfect consistency. Um, again, the full recipe for all of these dishes will be in the description below. But... For the most part, I'm going to mix everything up and I'm going to pour it over the sweet potatoes. And I know some people, they like to boil their sweet potatoes before they, you know, bake them or however they make them. And that's cool, however you want to do it. But I make them this way and they come out so delicious and so tender each time. And it's not a, a hassle to make them. It's not extra steps added. So, you know, that's my goal to give you guys really simple recipes that you can follow and remember. So I'm going to pour over this sugary, cinnamony, buttery glaze all over these sweet potatoes. And once I make sure that the glaze is kind of seeping in the cracks of the sweet potatoes, I'm going to put some butter on top. You know, I just took a couple tablespoons and diced it into small pieces. And from there, I'm going to put some foil on top. And throw this bad boy in the oven and I'm going to let them cook and move on to my next item. My next item is cornbread. So for the cornbread, I'm going to add some flour, some cornmeal, baking powder, some salt. And I'm going to add some wet ingredients also, but I like to mix the dry ingredients first and then the wet ones. So for the wet ingredients, I'm going to add some eggs, some milk, some oil, some melted butter, and I'm going to mix this up really good. And once I mix that up really good, I'm going to pour that in with my dry ingredients and I'm going to mix, mix, mix. And I'm not going to over mix it. I'm just going to mix it enough to where it doesn't seem clumpy. But we not about to just beat it because we don't want, we don't want that. We don't want it, period, point blank. <laughs> So from there, after we mix this up, we're going to also throw this in the oven. All the specifics, again, will be in the description below on how long to cook it and, you know, all the details. So from there, I'm just going to spray my pan with some um, Pam. Um, I use the buttery flavor kind from Pam, but you can also use cooking oil. You can use butter as well if that's what you want to grease your pan with. So now that I'm putting the batter into my cast iron, I'm going to bake that also. Um, you can use any type of pan when cooking your cornbread. My grandma always, always, always used her cast iron. I don't remember cornbread being made in no other pan, so that's how I make mine. Now, onto the chicken, you know, really simple but really delicious. Um, after you clean your chicken, however you clean it, whether you just wash it, whether you add some um, lemon juice and vinegar and water, to get, however you clean your chicken, clean it first. Then you season it. Again, I use Chef Bay seasoning. Um, you can also use whatever you want for your ingredients, such as... Um, Salt, pepper, again, garlic powder, onion powder is good on chicken, adobo, um, saison, all of that is good seasonings for chicken. Um, I also put in a little bit of mustard because it really helps with the texture. You really can't taste the mustard when you add it on. So for people that ask, does it taste good? Yes, it tastes good, honey. But it's not the mustard um, taste that we're doing it for. It's the texture and the extra just layer that it add to it so from there I'm gonna put some flour on top of my chicken whether you put it in a ziploc bag and shake it up or whether you just put some flour in a bowl coat your chicken really good from there I'm gonna fry my chicken um, I have my heat on like medium high heat from there, I'm just going to let my chicken cook and let it rock out for about 15 to 20 minutes until it's nice and golden brown Oh my God, that looks so good. Guys, you guys are going to love this recipe. Make sure you guys come back and leave me some comments in the description below and let me know 
how you guys love this because I'm trying to tell you not only does it look good, it tastes so good. So after taking the cornbread out of the oven, I'm just buttering up the cornbread and making sure it's all nice and delicious. From there, you can see the cabbage, it cooked down. Hey, that's what cabbage do. But when I tell you this cabbage is so full of flavor, I could eat it every single day. And not to mention that cabbage is keto if you eat the cabbage by itself or incorporate it on a keto plan. But this ain't that right now. <laughs> now, for these sweet potatoes, honey, they came from the heavens above. And as you can see, they were glistening and they were so beautiful. And, you know, here you have it in a nutshell. Fried chicken, sweet potatoes. Oh, you cannot forget the hot sauce, honey. You cannot come to Chef Bay's page and think you are going to forget the hot sauce. So from there, we're going to put that hot sauce on. Um, as you can see, we got our cabbage to the side, some cornbread. Hey, Sunday dinner during the week. It didn't break the bank. And I just want to thank you guys for watching. Check out my website at cuttingupwithbay.com for the cookbooks and the seasonings. Um, add me on Instagram at chefbay underscore. And thank you guys for all the love and support. Y'all have a good afternoon and peace out.